What's going on everybody on YouTube? It's Man Cave here again with yet another video for you guys. Tax season has come and gone. And I'm sure a lot of you are left with merely pocket change. What was that? Pocket change. Okay, enough of the bullshit. You guys all know a while back I got rid of Showtime. Something I swore I would never do. Well, of course, I had seller's regret. So, luckily the person who I traded Showtime for, as you guys know, well, I haven't really showed you. I've showed you somewhat of the, the rollback wrecker. I've been waiting for forever and a day on a part to come in for the record that was desperately needed and what this is right here I wrote that on there just so I knew what it was. This is a 540 TTC puller motor hand built by John Holmes from Holmes Hobbies. This is a $140 motor but this is what it's going to take to get that big 12, 13 pound beast rolling. And along with that I'll be using a, of course, Torque Master BRXL. That being said, luckily the person who Bill, or who I traded for Showtime for, he does. Well, don't be beating him down for it either, because he does not do cookie cutter rigs. Like, if you want Screaming 2, or you want Game Changer, or you want Nine Finger, or Showgirl, hit up somebody else that does cookie cutter buggies. This right here, I let him have 100% total free reign on the design. And no expense was spared on this one, and we broke the record. I thought I had a lot of money in on Showtime, well... There's a good reason why this rig is called pocket change. Due to the fact that there was no sp uh, expense spared and I gave him free reign, basically just tossed some ideas and parts, we ended up with a shitload of money in our rig. Now at first glance, you might say, okay, well it's just a JK with some tube work done to it. And that's where you are sorely wrong, my friend. We're going to start off by looking at the back of this rig, because holy shit, look, there's a spare tire. If you look really close, there's a Tennessee license plate with my name on it, with the correct county and everything. thought that was really sick, even though it looks like I need to update my tags. As you can see, it's a 2012 JK, but if we take off the roof here, which we're going to do. Take off the roof, we've got a full tuber with a spare tire that is removable. Now here's where it's going to get into the reason why this thing costs so damn much money. I had a Viterra Twin Hammers, didn't like it. So, in exchange for all the labor, I traded him my Viterra Twin Hammers ready to run for the labor, bending up the tube, all that good stuff, he hand-built this rig literally from a pile of parts that I gave him. He did a full custom interior, which we utilized some of the Wraith parts, the shifters, some of the stock stickering. He did some custom stickering. Seats came out of a Wraith. So this is a true four-seater. Um... I'm going to show you real quick before I get into the other stuff. Even though one of the bulbs... The bulbs... These are amazing kits. There's two... I know you guys can see the rear tail lights back there, but... You have parking lamps. There's two... Uh, Radio Shack project boxes that... Go together and there's two toggle switches. 
So right now we got parking lamps. Change it over, we got parking lamps and headlights. Now we did have a light bar up in there, but the light bar we had a little bit of difficulty with. So if I turn that switch that way, the light bar would turn on, but if I turn it the other way, I've got rock lights underneath. So, not that I'm really going to be using the lights that much. We have a set of full rock lights. And they're basically just three-way rocker switches. Now, if you bear with me for a second, and pardon the crappy camera angle, I'm going to go into taking this apart a little bit so you guys can see what makes up the guts on this. So as we remove the spare tire, by the way, these are Mayhem Monster 22s with cut and shut RC four wheel drive two face tires. So next we're gonna have to disconnect all the lights because they do just pop right out of the socket, which is nice. Get these lights pulled out. It is a rather intricate process for moving the body on this thing. Okay, so lights are out. Next thing to come out is the body shell, which that leaves. Now, you can actually see the tube work. Now you can kind of see along the lines of there's, here's a prime shot of showing you the two project boxes and the way the toggle's set up. There's the toggle switches. Like I said, this one over here, parking lamps, flip back to neutral, nothing. Flip over, headlights and running lights. Like I said, over here would be the light bar, but flip it the other way. It's got two rock lights up front, four in the rear. I have a uh, high-tech HS uh, 7554SH servo. So high voltage, high res. And for axles on this one, I'm running a set of Blackwells. And yes, you are seeing this correct. Those are VP or Vanquish calipers mounted onto the stock RC four wheel drive disc rotor that comes on the Blackwells. We've got some crazy offsets here on the Mayhem wheels, which I gotta go back through and put the rest of the, every other uh, screw back in. But we're running a chassis mounted servo. It's got a, and of course by that sound you know it's brushless. I've got a Gen 3 slipper unit from Robinson Racing on it. Shockwise, we have RC four wheel drive ultimate scale black, 110 millimeter, no oil, just shocks. And we're running the, in the rear, we're running dual shocks. I'm running 110 primaries and 90 millimeter secondaries. For links, they are custom made with Stampede and Revo rod ends. All threads sleeved with brake line, so it's ultra strong. In the back you can see I've got a, uh, you can't really kind of freaking see it. I have a uh, Tekken RS Pro wired in, so you know I've got a pretty good power plant if I'm running an RS Pro. And without pulling off the interior, which is a pain in the ass, I'll just show you guys that that's what the Rock 412 motor was going in. So, the specs are... Tekin 1200 kV Rock uh, 412 motor. I have my Stage 3 Racing Dig Trans underneath there. We've got our interior, dual project boxes, six shocks, five cut and shut TSLs on Mayhem Monster 22s, which I still have to do finishing touches to. Custom, all custom tube, powder coated. Light kitted. Basically, this thing is a freaking beast. And unfortunately for me, I'm a dumbass when it comes to uh, working with uh, the hot, uh, or not the hot wire, but the RS Pro. So 
I'm probably going to have to get a little bit of edumacation on that one. As you can see on the rear end too, we also have our other Vanquish disc brake caliper on it. These axles I've taken apart and repacked with grease because they don't really come with anything. Once again, I said there's no oil in the shocks, which is why we went with a quad set up in the rear. So that our bump stop was set perfectly with the weight of that other spare tire in there. <clears throat> Everything on this rig, as I've said before, has been scratch built. Minus the parts of frame rails. Completely custom. All the tube work has been hand bent. There's not a single thing on here that has in some form or fashion been manipulated and a custom tweak done to it. So with that being said, all in all in parts, by the time we totaled everything up, we came up with a rough estimate of just over $2,500 in this one. As I said, I was going to spare no expense on my next rock racer, and I sure as hell didn't. So hopefully I get the bugs worked out with this and this thing's out on the trails really soon. So yes, this does have dig. It'll be the very first uh, rock bouncer I've had with dig. It's not the first one out there ever with dig. But it'll be the very first time I've ever actually used something with dig other than in a scorpion. So it's going to be, this is the flagship rig from now on. You guys are going to be seeing tons of it once it's up and functional. And of course my tripod always acts up. You guys know how it is. It's a crappy tripod. So I'm going to put her back down. Um, trying to think of other things. The little bit of detail work that's got to be left to do is you see these little machine slots inside of here in the rim. I'm going to paint those. Anything that's machined is going to get painted that copper color, so it goes with the whole theme. I thought about copper rings, but they're just going to get scratched up, so I squashed that idea. But other than that, that right there is the new uh, setting the new benchmark for all of my rigs. So stay tuned for further updates of it and as always if you like what you see rate comment subscribe and we'll see you guys later